July isn't over yet, but it's already been declared the hottest month ever recorded. Right now, 149 million Americans are under heat advisories, with some hard-hit cities desperate for relief, like Phoenix, which has seen temperatures topping 110 degrees for an entire month. The extreme heat this summer has also led to severe storms and devastating wildfires. There's no doubt these are manifestations of climate change. And the U.N. Secretary General says this new normal is here to stay. Climate change is here. It is terrifying. And it is just the beginning. The era of global warming has ended. The era, the era of global boiling has arrived. Joining me now, Kathy Boffman McLeod. She is the director of the Adrian Arsht Rockefeller Foundation Resilience Center at the Atlantic Council. Uh, Kathy, welcome back Thank to the you. show. Thank you for nice coming here. here. You have advocated for naming heat waves similar to how we name hurricanes or wildfires. Yes. How do you how do you think that will help cities and nations manage and keep people safe? during extreme heat events? One of the biggest things that challenges us is that heat is silent and invisible. And so unlike hurricanes that have the drama and the um, palm trees blowing sideways or floods with the cars in the streets or fires, they're very dynamic and they're telegenic. Heat is invisible and silent. And so it needs branding and PR. But what we're also advocating is that it be based on a health-based categorization or a ranking system, just like hurricanes are. And so we would know that this is the, the expected health effect on people, and it gets a name so that it has a brand. And in our early uh, evaluations of our, our pilot program in Seville, Spain, it works. People pay attention, they do more to prepare, and they trust the government's advice on what to do to protect themselves. So how, do, how are you measuring that success? Uh, so you, we did a survey before and after Hurricane, uh, whoops, uh, uh, heat wave Zoe was named last summer. And Zoe, when um, people remembered the name, they could say we did more to prepare. And when they remembered the name, they also said we trusted the government's advice. And so we did a pre-survey and a post-survey, and we'll be putting that out for everyone to see. Um, and then we also look at all of the data to understand what is the health effect of this particular community combined with not just the temperature, but nighttime temperatures and humidity and cloud cover. Those things are really important when you think about the health effects of heat. And so then what are the some of the criteria that would take um, say, a regular hot day or a series right. of days and bump it up to getting a name like Zoe? Well, it's three days in a row. And again, nighttime temperatures are really important mm. because we don't rest and we don't clean our brain and we wake up tired and make mistakes. And um, there's all sorts of economic effects of that. Um, and so over the three-day time with all of those conditions, um, we have an algorithm that tells us that this is really dangerous. And so we can predict in terms of percentage increase of expected mortality. And so how many more uh, deaths do we expect given these conditions over the last three days? And when it gets to a certain level, we say this thing needs a name and it needs all the PR and all of the media it can get. Um, how do you pick the names before I ask you a, a serious question next? <laughs> well, we did a lot of focus groups. And so we, we want the name to be right for the community, for the region. Mm. And so those names are, we start with Z so that they don't cross over with A, you know, as we start with ah, Hurricane. And do you a, go backwards? And we go backwards. So Zoe was first, Yago was next, Xenia was the next one. And so we pick names that are memorable, but not too wacky <laughs> and that reflect the region. So um, the U.N. Secretary General Gutierrez, who we showed in the intro, he had his admonition, and it was pretty stark, and I want to read it again. The era of global warming has ended. The era of global boiling has arrived. That not only applies to air temperatures, but also to ocean temperatures. Um, and there's a new study that warns of the possible collapse of ocean currents because of climate change. And we're also seeing because of the, the, the ocean in Florida is a, a, 100 degrees and bleaching the coral. Um, what's it going to take to reverse the effects of climate change? Or are we too far gone? Well, we have um, gone too far to pull back on some of the effects. And the temperatures that we're experiencing now, we will see for 30 years, no matter what we do. Mm. 
we need to stop burning fossil fuels, period, full stop, that's it. We have to get off of fossil fuels. And the uh, bleached corals, the fires in the Caribbean, uh, collapsing tourism industries and the worker productivity losses and the buckling runways, I mean, this is only going to get worse. And we have El Nino, that, that weather effect that has making has the, the heat even worse. And so um, we have to stop burning fossil fuel, period. And, and yet, when temperatures go up, people run their air conditioners, they do all sorts of things. And running air conditioner is not a good idea either. Well, it, in terms of In terms of its impact on the environment. Yes, and there's also waste heat that comes off of an air conditioner and then also the power that powers the air conditioner. Right. So <laughs> right. we are in a, a vicious circle. And so there is lots of effort to make air conditioners cleaner and greener. Um, there are many things that we can do to make it cooler without power. Passive cooling, it's called. Mm -hmm. Lots of nature-based solutions and the way we, when we work, where we where to work, uh, the way we build our buildings and our cities, all sorts of things we can do about it. But we have to start right now and we have to get our arms around how big it is because we, we just don't have that sense yet. Mm -hmm. And I ask that question because there is a story in the paper today, I think it's the Washington, the Washington Post, um, about how these, the, these incredible heat waves that we're going through around the world is leading to an increase in the use of fossil fuels.